Hi, I'm Lisa McLeod, Ontario's Minister for Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries, as well as the proud MPP for Nepean for the past 15 years. Over the past 15 years, I've had the opportunity to work with Stephen Bechta, Michelle Taggart, and many of the staff and board members of the Ottawa Boys and Girls Club. And I'm sorry I couldn't be with you today, but I couldn't be more proud than the significant investment of $1 million from the provincial government being injected into the Boys and Girls Club to continuing the great work that you do and the programming that is so vital to support so many of our vulnerable community members. And I'd like to say I'm looking forward, to, when it's safe to do so, to visiting the Boys and Girls Club again. I've got cherished memories there, of course. As you know, uh, we uh, had a hockey game there a few uh, years ago. We were able to um, donate a lot of uh, hockey equipment and sports equipment. And just before the pandemic, I was able to make a significant announcement to support the operations of the Boys and Girls Club uh, in the city of Ottawa. So again, to Stephen and to Michelle, to the entire team, uh, congratulations. You've worked so hard for this. I'm so proud of you. And to all the, the youth and uh, children that uh, take advantage of the excellent programming at the Boys and Girls Clubs, including taking part in their facilities. I hope you really enjoy this. This is a, a significant investment. It's an important investment, and it is one that is designed around your future, a bright future that you're all going to hold. So congratulations once again. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you, but uh, I'm, I'm here in spirit and just very proud uh, to see this project come to fruition. Good morning, everyone. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue à tous et toutes. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishabe people. The Algonquin peoples have lived on this land since time immemorial. We are grateful to have the opportunity to be present in this territory. My name is Stephen Becta, and I'm the very proud board chair of the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa, now known as the BGC Ottawa. I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming you here today, our distinguished guests, to our small but mighty groundbreaking event. Our South End Clubhouse that you can now see being built behind me is part of our ambitious vision to double our impact and members by 2024. However, we can only do our work serving thousands of children and youth, helping them thrive with your help. I'd like to now invite the Honourable David McGinty to say a few words to mark this special occasion. Well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Um, I'm really delighted to be here this morning. Um, thanks for coming to Ottawa South for this very exciting announcement. Um, and thank you, everyone who's joining us, those who are coming in virtually as well. I'm really pleased to be here today with Minister McKenna, my colleague and good friend, um, MPP Jeremy Roberts, Mayor Watson, Councillor Diane Deans, Adam Joyner and Stephen Becta of the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge the project we're announcing today is on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg people. For over a year now, we have clearly faced unprecedented challenges together. During this COVID-19 pandemic, I think we're showing that we can come together, all orders of government, Ontario communities, like all of those across Canada. People need help. Our citizens need help, and we are continuing to support them. Strategic investments in community infrastructure are critical to building communities where residents can thrive. Modern, accessible community spaces provide Canadians with places where they can seek the support they need and access essential community services and programs. And now more than ever, we need to ensure these spaces are conducive to safe gatherings. That's why I'm so happy to be here with you today to celebrate the announcement and groundbreaking of an important project that will have such a positive impact on residents in Ottawa South. There's simply nothing, nothing more important than investing in our kids and helping them make good choices at a young age in a setting where learning abounds. Today's announcement ensures that youth here in Ottawa South will have improved access to vital programs and services in a modern and safe facility they can enjoy for years to come. And now please let me introduce uh, the Honourable Catherine McKenna, my good friend, Member of Parliament for Ottawa Centre, Federal Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, 
who will provide further remarks on behalf of the Government of Canada. Thank you very much. Merci. Thanks, Steve. It's good to see we've got you working here. Uh, it's really great to, to be joining all of you today with a really amazing announcement. Um, I also want to recognize that we're on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe peoples. I think we've all been hit pretty hard uh, with the discovery of the remains of 215 children uh, who died at residential a residential schooling in, in Kamloops. And I think there is a lot more work to be done on reconciliation. Um, it's great to be joined uh, by good friends and folks that are working really hard to improve our communities. Um, David, uh, I know this is a very important announcement. I know you've advocated hard for it. So thank you very much for being a tireless champion for Ottawa South. Um, uh, Jeremy uh, Roberts, a member of provincial parliament. Uh, we are working very closely with the province of Ontario to get projects built, you need levels of government working together, which brings me to Mayor Jim Watson. I don't know how many announcements we have done recently, but that's always a very good sign uh, that we are getting things built in our community that are really going to improve lives. And of course, I've been a big champion of Ottawa being the greenest capital. So last week's announcement um, that we are going to be the first uh, city to have uh, to be fully electric buses by 2026 is really amazing. So congratulations, it's great to be working with you. Um, Adam Joyner and uh, there's Adam uh, and Steve Bacta from the Boys and Girls Club uh, BGC, still getting used to the renaming. Um, thanks for all the work you do. And then of course I see some counselors. I think I saw Jean Cloutier, Riley Brockington, Diane Deans, if I've forgotten anyone, um, thank you very much for joining. Um, look, it's been a really hard time. I don't think there's any way to sugarcoat the last year and a half. Um, but the good news is we are going to get out of the pandemic. Vaccines are rolling out, but I think there's a lot of reflections uh, to be made. Um, one of the reflections, uh, I have three kids, is how hard the pandemic has been on young people, uh, on our kids. And uh, we need to be supporting all the kids in our community um, through COVID-19, but obviously beyond. Um, and that's exactly what our government has been, do, has been doing. We just announced uh, over $50 million in better ventilation for schools uh, across Ottawa. That includes schools in Ottawa Centre, like Lisgur Collegiate, Immaculata High School, Ecole Elementaire, Public, Louise Arbour. Uh, we've also invested in ventilation and long-term care homes, incredibly important. Um, mais aussi nous faisons des investissements pour améliorer la communauté, des investissements pour rénover uh, le centre Bronson, uh, de, pour, uh, pour uh, des, comment est-ce qu'on dit, playgrounds, uh, 29 playgrounds are being upgraded uh, across our community. Um, we've invested in the cornerstone, cornerstone housing for women and many, many other investments. And I think that's what building back better is. It means building a cleaner uh, community, uh, where we're driving to net zero emissions. It also means investing in a more inclusive community. Um, well, that brings me to uh, today's announcement. Um, I love the Boys and Girls Club uh, of Ottawa. It does such amazing work. And I've had a chance uh, to spend time at the clubhouses. Uh, in 2019, it seems like a very long time ago in May, I was at uh, the ribbon cutting for the Tomlinson Family Foundation clubhouse. Uh, I was with Mayor Watson, Steve Becta, but I've also had a chance to see the kids there and talk to the kids there and also see them speak uh, at uh, the annual fundraising breakfast. And what really stuck with me uh, was speaking to one girl and she said, this is a place that I can go that feels safe, where people know who I am and uh, they provide me with opportunities I wouldn't otherwise have. What could be more important than that in our community. I actually can't think of anything and uh, it is really important that we look at how we support all young people, how they have good community centers, how they have a safe place to go, how they have activities like after school clubs and homework clubs and they can go play basketball. Gosh, I think everyone wants our kids to go back uh, to normal and have these opportunities. Um, and that's why today's uh, groundbreaking is so exciting. This is through uh, the gov federal government's COVID-19 stream uh, in our infrastructure program. We decided we needed to repurpose how we were doing things. So 80 cents on every dollar 
uh, in this case, $4 million is being invested in a shovel ready project. I've said we also need jobs uh, and we need uh, construction going um, to uh, for the construction of this new clubhouse. I think it's called the for right now, the South End Clubhouse. And uh, it's going to serve also a community that's been really hard hit by COVID-19. Um, so that's an extra benefit um, that for a community that's gone through some really hard times, there's a lot to look forward to here. Very positive. It will serve three communities, Gloucester, Gloucester Southgate, River Ward, Alta Vista. En conclusion, uh, la pandémie, je pense, uh, m'a donné des réflexions sur notre communauté. Moi, je suis tellement fière de représenter la communauté d'Ottawa Centre parce que c'est une communauté qui travaille ensemble, où on travaille pour tout le monde. Um, but through COVID-19, I've really seen our community step up. Community is what you make of it. And people have really come together to support everyone, whether it's supporting uh, seniors or supporting young people uh, or supporting businesses. Go get out, get on your patios. I was there, uh, couldn't be happier uh, this past weekend. Um, we will get through this, but the only way we get through this is by doing it together. And I'm very proud um, that the federal government is a partner in this really awesome initiative. And I will be even more excited when I see kids uh, in the new gym, because there was new gym, no gym at the previous the community center shooting some hoops. Thanks. I'll take my mask off here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's wonderful to be here today with uh, some of my elected colleagues, uh, MPP McGinty, Minister McKenna, and Mayor Watson, along with uh, some of our council colleagues. And thank you, of course, to uh, Stephen Becht uh, uh, for being our MC today, and also, Stephen, for all of your incredible work supporting the Boys and Girls Club, BGC, in Ottawa. Uh, it's so incredibly important uh, to have uh, uh, good folks in the community stepping up to serve on, on the boards of some of these uh, very important community organizations and I was reflecting Stephen I think the last time you and I were together at an event was at the Tomlinson facility when we were announcing some uh, some Trillium investments into uh, into that new facility and so exciting to think about what can be here on this site uh, you know, this is a, a tad bit of a, a homecoming for me. Uh, while I grew up in the West End, I actually spent some time in the South End and went to elementary school just around the corner at Featherston Drive Public School, which is a, a stone throw away from here. Uh, and I can reflect back on my time there and think about how many of the children would have benefited from a facility like this to be able to go to after school, to be able to spend time at, uh, would have been a real game changer uh, at that time. You know, in a, in a time when the people of Ontario have been working to address the challenges brought on by COVID-19, I'm here today with my federal and municipal colleagues to be part of an important announcement. Ontario is committed to supporting municipalities and communities during this unprecedented time. L'Ontario est déterminé à soutenir les municipalités et les collectivités en cette période sans précédent. Through the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, also known as ICAP, both governments have committed more than $1 billion in combined funding through the COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Stream. COVID-19 Resilience Stream funding will contribute to building or renovating health and safety related projects in long-term care and education facilities, and joint public announcements for these education and long-term care facility projects took place back in April. This stream is also helping municipalities and communities address critical local infrastructure needs in the face of COVID-19, including $250 million in funding from the governments of Canada and Ontario. I'm pleased to be here to announce uh, $1 million in provincial funding for the construction of a new clubhouse that will serve as a youth services and community facility for the BGC of Ottawa. Je suis ici aujourd'hui pour vous annoncer que la province financera un million de dollars pour la construction de nouveau, proje, euh, nouveau pavillon qui servira d'installation euh, communautaire et de service aux jeunes pour le club des garçons et filles d'Ottawa. This new facility will offer better protection against COVID-19 and other viruses by including isolation rooms with direct access to outdoor space 
to avoid exposure. Other features of this new space include gender-inclusive bathrooms, built-in separation for large spaces like the gym, multiple entrances and exit points, and two separate kitchens for community use. This clubhouse will allow more space for social distancing and other COVID-19 precautions. And it will provide more youth the opportunity to receive the support they need in a safe and protected environment for years to come. Today's announcement comes in addition to three Ottawa projects we announced last month, also being funded under the local government component of the COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Stream. Those projects will help improve air quality and emergency preparedness at the Carling Family Shelter, improve outdoor recreation infrastructure such as bike and walking paths in Ottawa, and support better access to the internet at numerous community buildings, including the Cornerstone Women's Shelter. As the COVID-19 pandemic has clearly highlighted, investments in the health and wellness of Ontarians is more critical than ever. The 2021 Ontario budget, released on March 24th, builds on record investments made in response to the global pandemic, bringing total investments to $16.3 billion to protect people's health and $23.3 billion to protect our economy. And I'm particularly proud that in that budget, we announced another youth-focused project uh, right here in Ottawa South as well, and that's the new CHEO One Door for Care unit, which is going to provide enhanced services to over 40,000 children across Ottawa with special needs, mental health, or rehabilitative challenges. So another key investment in youth through uh, the Ontario government working together with some of our partners. Ontario's COVID-19 action plan now totals $51 billion. Supporting infrastructure projects like the one we're announcing today helps to protect families and our communities, making them stronger, healthier, and safer. I'm pleased that Ottawa residents will benefit from our joint investment. You know, I'm, I'm particularly looking forward to the groundbreaking event uh, for, for this building. Uh, I remember shortly after being elected, I had the chance to visit uh, the Boys and Girls Club over at Pinecrest, and I had a wonderful game of air hockey against some of the, uh, the children at that facility. And so I think we're all looking forward to getting through this pandemic and getting back to those important, critical uh, community engagement opportunities. And uh, can't wait to come back here and challenge some of the kids to a, a rematch in air hockey. But thank you so much for being here, everyone. Very good, Stephen. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, c'est vraiment un plaisir pour moi d'être ici avec uh, uh, Monsieur McGinty, the Honorable David McGinty, who is a great champion for Ottawa South and uh, was one of the driving forces to getting the federal government to support this project. My local MPP, Jeremy Roberts from Ottawa West Apian. Of course, the Honorable Catherine McKenna. She, I think uh, we've been to probably uh, at least 100 uh, announcements, groundbreakings, ribbon cuttings. Uh, even during COVID, we've been able to continue to do these kinds of important investments uh, for communities throughout the city of Ottawa. I also want to recognize my colleagues from uh, the South End, the South End Caucus. We've got uh, Jean Cloutier, Alta Vista's councillor, and I know the good people of uh, Herringate will use this facility uh, with great enthusiasm. And of course, River Ward councillor Riley Brockington, and where's Diane, our host uh, councillor Diane Deans. Uh, alors, c'est un plaisir pour moi, comme maire de la Ville d'Ottawa, de dire merci beaucoup à les deux autres paliers du gouvernement. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the federal and provincial governments uh, for their contribution for this very exciting project in the south end of the city. I also want to thank Adam and Stephen and the entire uh, board of directors. Je veux dire merci beaucoup à tous les membres du conseil d'administration uh, who have uh, worked very hard to get us to this stage. You can well imagine literally the hundreds of applications that the federal, provincial, and municipal governments receive every year for funding. And uh, this is the largest uh, funding program uh, in this program that was announced by the federal and provincial government to battle COVID-19 and to get people back to work. So the single largest investment is coming right here into this beautiful new clubhouse for uh, boys and girls in the south end of the city. <clears throat> I also uh, want to thank uh, my colleagues on City Council. They've been great advocates to uh, make sure that we have a uh, facility like this in a, in a neighborhood that um, 
uh, needs a little bit of uh, uh, tender, loving care. Uh, this neighborhood is a wonderful one. They've got, I uh, remember here, Diane, we're out for the beautiful Sens Rink of Dreams and the Community Center and the new kitchen at, uh, at Hedrington. And now this beautiful new addition in this great neighborhood. Um, I also uh, want to thank the staff of the Boys and Girls Club because they are really some miracle workers in our community. They do some great work inspiring uh, young people uh, to, um, to give back to their communities. And whether it's the clubhouse in Vanier that I've visited many times, or the one in Britannia, or Prince of Wales, uh, my thanks, Stephen, to uh, where's Stephen? There is to to you and your board of directors uh, for uh, bringing this project forward and advocating on behalf of these young people that live in this neighborhood. So uh, we're uh, I think a little late for the official groundbreaking. They've already started the work, but uh, we'll we'll leave it there because we want these folks back here to get back to work and make sure this building gets up as quickly as possible. Alors merci beaucoup. Uh, les, les députés provinciales et fédérales et mes, mes collègues du conseil municipal, thank you all for coming and joining us, and please give a warm welcome to Councillor Diane Deeds. Good morning everyone to all of my colleagues and the great people at uh, Boys and Girls Club and friends gathered here today. This is an exciting day and uh, I'm just really grateful to be part of it. Um, I want to also start by acknowledging that we are gathered here this morning on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. And uh, the people of the Algonquin Nation have lived on this land for millennia, and we thank them for their stewardship of this land. Um, let me start by offering a sincere thank you to the Boys and Girls Club and to the federal and provincial governments for their generous contributions that is making today's announcement possible. Um, this, is a, this is wonderful, wonderful news for our city and I can tell you it's particularly great news for the people of Gloucester Southgate Ward and for the people of Alta Vista and River Ward and I acknowledge both of my colleagues Council colleagues here today. C'est une excellente nouvelle pour notre communauté. For a hundred years, BGC Ottawa has been offering exceptional programs for youth in our city. This community has seen firsthand the impact that the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa has on the youth who participate in programs. Seven years ago, when the city decommissioned this yard, this was an old public works yard. Uh, it, we had a lot of trucks in here and big salt mounds on this site. And this yard was decommissioned. It was moved over to Conroy Road. And when they moved the yard, the city declared, wanted to, they recommended to council that they would declare this site surplus to the city's needs and sell it on the open market. And, uh, you can imagine that this would have been more housing or some form of similar thing. And this piece of land would have been lost to the community. And I can tell you in vulner vulnerable communities like this one here, uh, land is a, public land is a rare commodity. And it's a very important um, thing for communities that have not a lot of open space for young people and for families. And so with that in mind, I fought hard to keep this land uh, with the vision that someday, perhaps this could be developed in a way that would be for a community need. And so I tell you, I stand here with pride today, uh, looking at this site and recognizing that that vision actually is becoming a reality. And that's important to all of us. Um, we also here in Hetherington did what we called uh, um, a revitalization project. It's actually a project that I learned about when I visited Eastlake in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, they had revitalized a community that looked a lot like Hetherington. When I came back, I said, you know, we're going to do that in Hetherington. And the city agreed and we, uh, we started a project called Building Better Revitalized Neighborhoods. And through that project, as Mayor Watson correctly pointed out, we've seen a number of improvements. You can see the uh, work being done on Hetherington Road uh, to make it more of a complete street. 
um, when it when it's finished, uh, much needed work. But we also have now uh, Sands Rink and Basketball Court. We added on to the, the Recreation Center here and have a state-of-the-art community kitchen. And these were all ideas that came right here from the people who live in this neighborhood and who wanted to uh, see improvements. And I can tell you that the Boys and Girls Club is very much a part of the kind of messages that we heard through the extensive consultation the city did with the community about what this community wanted right here in Hetherington. And so uh, today, um, today is a proud day and I think we're going to hear from some of the young people who live right here in this neighborhood about what this means to them going forward. And I think that you will hear that uh, we all know this is life changing for many young people and will be for many, many years to come. And I know that Stephen and Adam, who I think are also came through the Boys and Girls Club, are proof positive that uh, we can make important changes in people's lives with critical investments. So I want to sincerely thank Adam and Stephen for, for their vision and for their generosity in the federal and provincial governments uh, for their hard work. And I think Michelle Taggart, I see here, uh, for her generosity and uh, the Lundys who are doing the work. Uh, everyone, this is, this is a proud day for all of us that we have come together and that we're going to see something significant that will be a lasting legacy in this community and will transform lives. So thank you very much for being here today. So first of all, thank you so much to you for the introduction and thank you so much to all of our esteemed guests for coming uh, today. This is a super exciting day. It's actually an incredibly special day. Uh, BGC Ottawa is deeply grateful uh, for the federal government, Infrastructure Canada, the COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Stream of the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Plan, the province of Ontario and the city of Ottawa for tangibly showing that they believe in our community's young people. We are humbled and honored to be able to build a new COVID design clubhouse, growing BGC Ottawa to now 12 locations and outreach services serving 19 Ottawa neighborhoods. I could talk for a long time, but I have a bit of a surprise. Uh, and that is, we have two very special youth with us today who live right here in this community. BGC alumni, uh, Asmahan and, and Nesma, I would love for you guys to come on up with me and we're gonna ask you a question. So come on up, my special guests, give them a round of applause. Okay, you live in this community and have visited the Hetherington Satellite just a few blocks away. What will a new clubhouse mean to you and to your friends? What it means to me is that it will be a much bigger space and more people can come so we can all social distance. And it's really fun there because there's activities and nice stuff to do. I run a lot, we play. There's, I'm happy that they're building this one because there's much more space to play so everyone can social distance better. Thank you. What, what the new Homer Club means to me. The new Homer Club means to me is that like it's very fun. There's a lot more activities and uh, the Homer Club provides us with food, education, and I get to see a lot more of my friends from different neighborhoods and make more friends. Thanks, Steve. Um, the Tanger Parks family is honored to support BGC Ottawa in expanding its reach in the South End. Um, communities are at the heart of everything that we do and it's wonderful to know that thousands of youth are going to have access to these life-changing services uh, in a community that needs it a lot in a time that needs it a lot. Um, on a personal note, uh, Steve, Adam and I have been dreaming of this day uh, for for me it's the last three years since I joined the board and um, I'm just so excited that it's finally here 
and uh, we truly could not have done it without the support of all three levels of government and so thank you so much to everyone who has been involved in this it has been a true community effort uh, on a national scale and uh, we're just so pleased that that we can be part of it that the Tiger Parks family can be part of it so thank you so much to everybody involved So we're incredibly honored by the support of the Tiger Parks family. Thank you, Michelle. Um, once again, on behalf of our board of directors, we are thrilled to be able to extend and expand our impactful evidence-based programming in safe ways to Ottawa's South End. As the BGC Ottawa alumnus, I know firsthand how powerful these clubhouses can be to change the trajectory of a child's life. Grâce à vous, nous continuons d'aider des milieux d'enfants et des jeunes. Thank you all once again for supporting the BGC Ottawa and for helping us offer a space for every kid that needs it and systemic opportunities to young people all over our city. This concludes our formal program. Merci. I'd like to invite our honored guests to join in a photo op directly after there will be time for Q&A from the media. Thank you all so much for being here today.